as a constitutionally... It is not my obligation, and do not point to me. Yes, you have a constitutional oath to uphold the Constitution, ma'am. You misunderstand the procedure. I will attempt to explain it to you. Objection. The documents that you want are not documents that are in the court's file at this point in time. Objection, ma'am. I don't know if they would ever be in the court's file at this point in time. That's not my problem, ma'am. Absolutely it's your problem. No, that's not my problem. Your position is that you want them from the prosecutor, and you have requested them from the prosecutor. That's right. And the prosecutor has failed to give them to you. That's right. You can make the appropriate application to the court, and you can say to the court, I've asked for them, I'm entitled to them, I haven't gotten them, order them to give it to me. I've already filed a notarized affidavit of fact in reference to return of property weeks ago, a notarized affidavit. So if you're telling me you don't have to acknowledge affidavits, all right, that's what your statement is. However, bottom line is this court has failed to prove jurisdiction and has avoided the issue of jurisdiction at all costs. And you don't, nobody in here has the status, all right? Nobody has proven status, and nobody in here has the authority to proceed. Now, the last hearing we discussed, you stated that this matter. Could you please stop yelling at me? This matter, you stated, ma'am, for the record, you stated that this matter was relative to jurisdiction, not Mr. Keesler's position here and not anything else. You stated that you were giving the prosecution a chance to prove jurisdiction. And he's not even the assigned prosecutor to the case, but obviously he's remaining silent, and he has nothing to state. So I move that this case be dismissed. When there is an appropriate application before this court to address the issue of discovery violations, jurisdiction, or anything else, the court will act. Filing a notarized or not notarized affidavit is not an appropriate way to bring a matter before the attention of the court. What you must file is a notice of motion that sets forth the relief that you want, and it needs to be supported with a certification, an affidavit, whatever it is. Can you repeat that, ma'am? Notice of motion. This is exactly what I told Cheyenne Matoda Kushner L. For the record, ma'am, which rule, authority, courtroom rule, statute are you using to address that matter? It is in the court rules. I do not recall, and I'm not going to look up for you the exact court rule, but the court rule set out the procedure that you must follow. Objection, ma'am. I'm not a part of your society. I'm not subject to your courtroom rules, and you have not proven jurisdiction. And I will never address the issue of jurisdiction until and unless the appropriate application is made before the court, because filing either an affidavit that's notarized or an affidavit that's not notarized does not bring it before the attention of this court. Objection. There is no discretion to ignore the lack of jurisdiction. Swiss v. United States. Jurisdiction is fundamental, and a judgment rendered by a court that does not have jurisdiction in here is void ab initio, and that is application of Y300 P.132 v. Caveat. Once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed when it clearly appears the court lacks jurisdiction. The court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. Malo v. United States 505 F2D. When jurisdiction is challenged, the party invoking jurisdiction has the burden of establishing Basel v. U.S. Power Light Company. Courts enforcing their statutes do not act judicially but merely ministerially. Thus, no judicial immunity and unlike courts of law do not attain jurisdiction by service of process, nor even arrest and compelled appearance. I'm here by way of threat, duress, coercion. I'm going to make that clear for the record every time I have to appear, if I have to appear. The only reason I'm appearing here is by way of your threat, duress, coercion or your company's threat, duress, coercion. Once jurisdiction is challenged. Let me interrupt you, please. You can read me this until the cows come home. You can read it ad nauseum and ad infinitum. It doesn't change the fact that until the issue is brought appropriately before this court, no ruling with regard to jurisdiction is ever going to be made. Now, let me ask you this question, though. In the other matter, first of all, let me backtrack a little bit. In the other, let me get the correct number out here because we now have two numbers. 
In the case with indictment number 08-04-0441, which is the one in which Chaim M. Kushimirel is also involved, I have severed those matters. So they will be on completely separate tracks. But uh, he told me that he had filed a notice of removal to the federal court. And my question to you is, have you filed a notice of removal to federal court with regard to any of these matters? Yes, ma'am. Notice of removal has been them? filed all of them? regarding all, all the matters. Three of these, the three matters? Yes, the three okay. matters that uh, you uh, May I ask you, please, you tell me, when did you file this? It was filed last night, FedEx. To by the way, federal FedEx, court? To the federal court. All right. Yes. Uh, well, as I am sure you are aware, if the court accepts them, then we will simply transfer them to the federal court. We won't deal with them anymore. Okay. Well, I'm still sure you're aware of the matter that you've not proven jurisdiction in either of the hearings and that you've avoided addressing the issue of jurisdiction. And I will continue to not address the issue of jurisdiction until the appropriate motion is filed with the court and the court has the ability to address it and make a determination with regard to it. And, and Judge, if I could just for a moment, that, that's the issue at hand. As currently stands, we are representing... Objection. <laughs> You're not representing me. Therefore, it would be our responsibility to file that motion. Given the fact that he will not cooperate with our office, it's impossible for us to do that. Objection. We really need to well, reach the issue. I do I, I, I want to get back to what Mr. Uh, I, I do want to get back to what Amir KCL said. Now, we addressed the issue to some extent with regard to the indictments. I have here for you, and the record will reflect, that I am giving you a copy of the indictment that has 08-07-0727 and also 08-04-0441. Objection. Uh, just for the record, the Office of Public Defense is not representing me. We don't have any power of attorney for me, and uh, I'm not part of your society, so you cannot represent me, and we do not share nationalities. Okay, now, for the record, Mr. Uh, I need the nationality of every agent in here, and I need the name and the information because I'm suing everybody. Mr. Kramer. Everybody. So I need everybody's name and your position, Excuse starting me. with Excuse you, me. sir. Who is calling out from the audience? I was, ma'am. No, you were not. Um, Who was, no, do not hand anything over. Nothing. In the audience, please do not call out while court is in session or the officer will ask you to leave. These are now completely discombobulated. They're not stable yeah. to, well. But the one wasn't stable enough. The one was. No, I don't have, con look, it, you can't even read this. Is that what I gave you? I think so, yes. I give you back the original. Do you have the copies? I give them to her. Okay. I, need, I need your name uh, and your position, yeah, sir. I need your name and position, sir. No one is going to give you any information. Ma'am, are you stating that you are not obligated to provide me with your identity and status? You know my name. Your employees or your co-workers are not obligated to provide me with their identity, status, and company position now? Ma'am? Yes? Did you not just hear me? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I was trying to get the paperwork together. Okay. okay. Can you wait well, a moment until I'm finished? No, I'm going to repeat myself. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here on the time, ma'am. Okay, hold on. Right. I'm trying to get all these papers together. Oh, it's a simple question. I'm sure you can answer it while you get your papers together. I, can't, I cannot get them together. I can't answer. This only has three. Okay. This has three counts, mm -hmm. and this you didn't yes, make a copy counts. of the last count. So make a copy of the last page and bring it in, okay. and we'll staple them together. All right, Amir, Noble Amir KCL, you complained about discovery. I think I've addressed that. I'm giving you the copies of the indictments, and you said you've never been interviewed. I am sure that Mr. Kiesler can give you now a date for you to be interviewed. Objection, ma'am. I, I do not require the Office of Public Defense or any attorney at law. Well, you told me, you told me that you, you were complaining that you hadn't been interviewed. No, what I stated was if he was representational.